This video shows you how to enter a new salaried employee. Select employees on the left hand icon panel and on the right at the top click on the plus new employee button. You'll need this information to be loaded in. Select next and enter in the name and the email address for the employee. I don't have the IRD number or the bank account at this stage, so I've entered in some placebo numbers. As long as you make sure that these numbers are changed before the first pay, that's OK. Select the appropriate tax code and choose Next. And enter in the employee's deduction for KiwiSaver and the company's contribution. If the employee is not eligible for some reason, you can turn off the KiwiSaver that way. Now we can enter in the leave. This employee is on standard hours because he's salaried. We'll enter in the standard hours per pay cycle. Let's say it's 100 hours and this is a fortnightly pay so we'll go over 10 days. So this employee is expected to work 10 hours a day. The employee will receive four weeks holiday, so we put four in the holiday box. And we're going to select the average weekly earnings for this. Now this setting means that the employee's ordinary weekly pay will be compared to the 52 week average weekly pay and the higher of the two will be selected for any annual leave taken. The leave anniversary is automatically populated if your company has a policy of closing down at Christmas time perhaps and so you might have a company close down date so you expect all the staff to have gained their entitlement to leave by that date you can amend this date here by just typing in the new or the correct date for the company. But if you need to reset this back to the employee's personal date click the little round button here. The following settings are all preset to a standard. You can alter those if you need to and move forward. So we'll click next. Now we need to select which regional holiday the employee will receive. If I click the down arrow here, I'm going to choose Wellington. That means Wellington Anniversary Day will be the day that pops up for this employee to take off. Choose next again. Now I'm going to set up the salary for the employee. If I had some salary information in the company template, I could add it from there. Or I could just create the payment as we go. So I'm going to click Create New Payment. Click the plus button on the right and choose that it's a salary. Now I select whether it's an annual or a period salary. Annual is going to be the total that he's expected to earn every year. Period would be what he receives each pay time. So that might be his fortnightly payment. But I'm going to go with annual and the frequency will be regular. So this employee is going to be on $80,000 per year. Just enter it in there and click the reduce by leave taken. This means that any leave taken will be reduced from the employee's salary so he's not getting paid twice for the same day. I re-enter the period hours he's meant to work for that salary which is 100 per pay cycle. I'm just going to pop in 10 hours for each of the days. Now this employee is actually working on a farm so he may work seven days and then maybe another three or four and then have a couple of days off. So I'm just going to pop in every day as a potential work day for him with this work pattern. And click OK. And I can set up anything else I need here too. I'm just going to finish with this and go next. And I do want to send this employee a pay slip when the pay is closed off. So I leave it on yes. Next again. And I need to select whether or not the employee is contributing to child support. So I'm not knowing about that so I'll leave that one off for now and choose next again. Now we set up deductions. If we have deductions on a company template I can add them from here but if not I can create it as I need. So I'm just going to create it and enter in that it's a fixed amount and it's for accommodation and he may be renting accommodation from the farm. 
which is 500 per fortnight. I don't need it to be paid into the company bank account. I can leave it set up just as a withheld deduction so it's left behind in the company payroll account when the pay goes through. Click OK and Next. Now I'd like to invite the employee to download the PaySource phone app and have a look at the settings I've put in. So I'm just going to click Finish and that will instantly invite the employee to download the app. That's done. Now we can see Graham has been added into the list of staff. I can make any changes I want just by selecting him and going to his template area to set anything else up I want. If I go to the runner pay area at the top, I'll be able to check that he's in the payroll. He's not showing in the payroll, so to fix that, I'll come up to the top and click on the edit pencil here. When I scroll down to the bottom of this edit area for the payroll, I can see that Graham's in the list, but he's not ticked on. And that's because I'm not selecting everybody to be in the payroll. There might be some staff that I don't always pay, so it hasn't automatically put him in. And that's because of this setting here. It says that I'm going to select the staff that are going into the pay. If I had selected all, then all of these people would be in there. So I'm ticking on Graham and OK. There he is. He's in. Now if I click on his preview button here, I'll be able to see the details I've set up. 